Good afternoon traders, hope you've had a successful trading day and a successful trading week so far. So on to then the topic of this blog post which is all about the RBNZ meeting and also the outlook for the New Zealand dollar. So overnight we had the RBNZ interest rate decision and minutes following after that. Uh, and in terms of the, the decision itself, there's no real changes there, very much in line with market expectations. So interest rates remained at 25 basis points or 0.25% and no changes to the QE program. Again, very much in line with market expectations. And the current size of the QE program uh, in New Zealand is uh, 60 billion New Zealand dollars. Uh, but again, market didn't really expect any changes there. So very much in line with expectations. Now, if you want to learn more about the QE program, Joel did cover it quite nicely in his blog yesterday. So I do recommend you check that out. But there were some positive tones uh, coming out from the RBNZ minutes. So one of the things that the RBNZ did say was that from May onwards, economic performance did uh, tick up towards the upside. So starting to see a slight rebound there. And also that the physical stimulus that they were releasing was a lot more than they originally had planned. So it does show that the RBNZ has somewhat of a commitment to helping uh, the domestic economy, which is obviously a major plus. But shortly after that followed a fairly dovish comment. So the main one being, and I'll just read it out here, is that uh, we are working towards uh, ensuring a broader range of monetary policy tools that would be deployable in the coming months. So markets did see this as a negative thing, and that's because uh, within that statement, it's been mentioned that they will take a couple of months to come out with these monetary policy measures. And so that means in the short term, uh, we're not likely to really see much coming from the RBNZ in terms of physical stimulus. Uh, whereas if you have a look at other central banks like the Australia uh, RBA, well, they're doing everything they can to support the domestic economy. So not really seeing that same level of commitment, which is uh, probably disappointed markets and contributed towards that sell off we saw on uh, New Zealand dollar against the US dollar. Furthermore, there was a lot of commotion around the New Zealand uh, dollar exchange rates as well. So as you may or may not know, uh, the New Zealand economy is very much an exporting focused economy. So a lot of their GDP is tied to uh, their exporting activities. So a very key metric for them. Now, if you're an exporting country, uh, you have to watch exchange rates closely because the higher your domestic exchange rates are in comparison to other foreign rates, the more expensive exporting becomes. So just to break down that in terms of, you know, basic example, Let's say, um, just for example sake, that the exchange rate between the NZD and USD is one to one. So one New Zealand dollar is equal to one US dollar. Now let's say the NZD massively appreciates. Now two NZD is equal to one US dollar. So if you are someone, let's say in the United States and you wanted to buy a product that was exported by the New Zealand economy, uh, so just a, let's just call it an NZD product, you would have to pay twice as much to get that product simply because of the fact that the NZD is worth twice as much as the US dollar in terms of exchange rates. So that's basically why exchange rates are so important for uh, exporting countries. Um, and the reason why the RBNZ uh, had basically said that due to the fact that our exchange rates are high, it's damaging our exports. And that in turn is uh, a laggard to our economic rebounds following from, of course, the impact of the uh, COVID-19 situation. So. They're quite keen on trying to intervene in terms of devaluing the New Zealand dollar. So they did say in one of their statements that uh, they would consider more direct measures to devalue basically the New Zealand dollar. And what for me, what was quite interesting is immediately after saying that they did talk about their QE program and they did say that uh, basically we won't increase the QE program uh, unless it's economically feasible. But the fact that they said it right after currency uh, intervention and the fact that the NZD was weak suggests to me that one of the things that they might actually consider doing if the NZD uh, doesn't fall to the levels they want it to is increasing the QE program. And they can use the excuse that actually we need this QE to help the economy rebound, but actually they'd be using that to flood the market with Kiwi dollars. So from a, you know, a supply and demand perspective, if you're bringing more QE dollars to the market, you're printing more uh, New Zealand uh, dollars, then the value of the New Zealand dollar decreases. So just to give you another example here, let's say I have a pencil. It's the only pencil in the world and it's worth £10,000. Now, if another nine pencils are produced, the value of that one pencil will now fall from, let's say, £10,000 to now £1,000 because I have an additional nine. So in the same way, if you introduce more currency into the market, more NZD, then that increases the money supply and therefore the value of the NZD will fall lower and that's going to help their sort of exporting uh, profits on that side. So that's, those are the sort of key takeaways from that. In terms of where the NZD is going to head next, well, due to the fact that they've sort of left it open-ended in terms of not really having a strong commitment in the short term and also this um, sort of consensus that actually 
if exchange rates don't fall, they may actually end up increasing their QE. Uh, that is leaving a sort of bearish tone on the New Zealand dollar. So going forward, uh, there might be a slight retracement because prices have fallen quite a lot in terms of NZD exchange rates, but still overall, uh, most likely to be uh, pinned towards the downside.